tendencies that I, I won't go into too much detail on, but for example, if somebody is sitting in Brazil and an investor is interested in investing in uh, you know, San Francisco real estate because it's so cheap, um, it's very hard for him or her to do so uh, because of cross-border frictions. Um, exchanges are down at night, they are down during the holidays. Uh, why does that have to be the case? Uh, they usually don't have real-time settlement, so it can take a few days for your uh, trade to execute um, and settle. Uh, and dividend distribution is actually quite difficult. So imagine what goes into a dividend distribution. You have to identify all your shareholders. There's a bunch of bank wires that are involved. There's a ton of uh, legal paperwork that happens. You know, these are all efficiencies that take time and money, and, and this doesn't have to be the case. And it just so happens that distributed ledger technology, or DLT, as, as people refer to it, is a very effective solution to this. Uh, and we believe that Stellar is particularly well suited to be the ledger on which most of these assets are issued and traded. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit as to why we think so. Obviously, all of the assets that I've been talking about are clearly securities, and when you're dealing with securities, you need to comply with the host of uh, regulatory issues. For example, sometimes you need to make sure that uh, the investors that are holding your asset are accredited. So you need to whitelist contributors. You might need to impose a lockup period uh, so that investors can't trade the asset for a year, for example. You might need to set uh, a maximum number of shareholders. Uh, you might have to have the issuer of the asset explicitly approve each trade. Uh, or if somebody goes and loses their asset, you need a way to recover these things. And this is just a, a small sample of the regulatory constraints that you have to work within. Well, in something like uh, Ethereum, this is all possible, but it requires a lot of complex smart contract scripting. And as a lot of you Solidity developers in the room uh, can attest to, you probably make a lot of money doing this. Well, the nice thing about the way that Stellar is designed is that it's very easy to implement these features because the system was designed to do it. So whitelisting holders, for example, is a, is a native feature of the network. You don't need to create a complex Solidity smart contract in order to implement this. And this is a big deal not only because it saves time and money, but it's much more secure. So we've all seen how many Ethereum smart contracts have been hacked, and this is because smart contracts are very hard to audit for security, uh, especially with the, with the scripting language as expressive as Solidity. In the Stellar world, this is all much more simple, it's basically a set of operations that you can choose from and combine to, to implement these features. The next point revolves around fiat anchors. So, as many of you know, Stellar's core focus is on working with financial institutions to onboard fiat currencies onto the network. And so if you look at Stellar today, you'll find that it's a ledger that has real fiat currencies backed by actual financial institutions. So you have euros, you have Nigerian Naira, you have Japanese Yen, things like this. This is a big deal in the context of securitizing uh, real-world assets because he, that same person in Brazil can now easily invest in uh, the Empire State Building, for example, using RIAI. He doesn't have to first hire a, a broker in the United States and go through some complicated process. Or, for example, let's say you want to cash out your investment and you don't want to cash out onto Bitcoin and then have to liquidate that Bitcoin somehow, you could cash out directly into the USD. So that's not only convenient, but it also saves you a lot of uh, volatility risk. And then dividend distribution. Instead of having to do all of those bank wires that I alluded to earlier, it's as simple as querying the database for who owns this asset, and you send that person dividends based on the percentage of tokens that they hold. And so the point here is that Stellar bridges the traditional world of fiat currencies with the new world of, of distributed ledger. And this opens up a lot of possibilities. Not only in real estate, but in frankly, every other project that you can imagine. But what I'm most excited about is 
this concept of a decentralized exchange, uh, which is something that's built into the Stellar Protocol. To those of you who may not be familiar with what a decentralized exchange is, it is, so let's say you compare it to a centralized exchange like NASDAQ or in the crypto world, uh, Kraken or Polonius. A decentralized exchange is not run by one company like a centralized exchange would be. It's run by the nodes in the decentralized system. So Stellar is a decentralized uh, ledger and this exchange is run by the nodes that comprise the Stellar network. And so uh, the reason why this exists is to facilitate the forex conversion of any cross-border payment. So let's say, for example, take a simple example, you want to, you're sitting in the States and you want to pay your friend in Europe, you're paying with USD, you want your friend to receive euros. Well, in order for that transaction to happen, there needs to be some kind of a, a conversion that takes place. And that conversion happens on the order book in the decentralized exchange. But what's interesting is that even though this exchange was developed for cross-border payments, what's happened is that it has now organically become used to do all kinds of cross-asset transfers, not just fiat to fiat, but you know, fiat to random ICO token, for example, or fiat to Empire State building share. And there's a few features that are specific to decentralized exchanges that I think would be interesting uh, to talk about briefly. One is that a decentralized exchange is not custodial. So what this means is that if you look at something like Poloniex or Kraken or Coinbase, you don't actually own your assets that are sitting in Coinbase. You don't control the private key to those assets. Coinbase does on your behalf, which is great and it's convenient. But what happens if Coinbase disappears? Or if Poloniex disappears? Well, then you're out of luck. What's interesting about a decentralized exchange is that you control the private key. The exchange never has custody of your asset. It's also, it doesn't curate assets. So one of the big problems for token projects is getting their assets listed on an exchange. You can imagine how many hundreds of thousands of token projects are hitting the market right now each of them wants to be listed on an exchange, but the exchange can't possibly list all these tokens. It adds a ton of overhead. Um, on a decentralized exchange, anybody can go and list the token. So a real estate project can securitize a building and then list it themselves. They don't need the exchange express permission to do that. The other interesting point is that uh, the Stellar decentralized exchange pools liquidity into one place. So you have pockets of liquidity for every asset in today's world. You have pockets of liquidity for Bitcoin and this exchange and that exchange, and you can't access all that liquidity in one place. Well, the great thing about a decentralized exchange such as Stellar's is that it pools all of that liquidity for that particular asset into one central exchange. It also, of course, offers real-time settlement. So it's another one of the nice uh, things about Stellar is that it's, it's very efficient. Uh, transactions are very fast. So uh, when you execute a trade, it's settled in three to five seconds. Five seconds at the max. Um, and of course, it's open 24 hours a day. It's not subject to bank holidays or uh, nighttime sleep schedules. But what I'm personally most excited about is the following which is the ability to do cross-asset transfer. So you could imagine, for example, uh, an employee of Facebook who holds a lot of Facebook stock and he wants to buy something. And this, by the way, is, is a liquid asset already. Um, but he wants to buy uh, a coffee. Well, imagine how complicated that process would be. You have to go and sell your shares through a brokerage and it would take forever and you'd probably leave that coffee shop before you even, uh, have time to get the coffee. Well, with something like this, you could you could take advantage of all the liquidity for all the assets inside of a decentralized exchange. So for example, you could use your Facebook stock to buy that, um, that cup of coffee by hopping from Facebook to USD or Bitcoin to something like uh, a wheat future um, to that 
cup of coffee or a share of the Empire State Building. I think that's pretty powerful and it's something that really does not exist today at all. And it could unlock a, a world of possibilities. Um, and we're really excited to make that happen. And so, you know, the, the thoughts that I'd like to leave you with here are that there's a lot of inefficiency in private markets. And distributed ledger technology is a very good solution to these inefficiencies. And in particular, Stellar is the right platform to do it on. But we can't do it ourselves. Stellar is a underlying infrastructure that makes this possible. But we need partners that actually onboard these assets and do all the necessary KYC and uh, uh, investor accreditation and all of the things that are necessary to make sure that this is all compliant with today's securities regulations. And so in order to do that, we work with companies like Slice. Uh, the guys from Slice will be coming up here in just a, a few minutes to talk about how they're going to do this, how they're going to tokenize real estate, why they're tokenizing real estate, and also why they chose to build it on Stellar uh, over many of the other platforms that you could do it on as well. So uh, we'll take questions as a group at the end, because uh, a lot of them will probably be specific to real estate, I imagine. Uh, so for now, thank you very much. And uh, we'll take a 10 minute break.